Okay, now we're going to look at something a little different. Uh, this is where we're going to start looking at how to describe videos uh, with like captioning systems. So in this video, we're going to look at Blip2, and then I've got one other video that's called Mplug Owl. These names are getting crazy and crazier. Uh, but Blip2, if it sounds like Clip, it's because it actually kind of uses Clip, or a modified version of Clip. Uh, let's go ahead and connect. Again, I'm just going to use a view 100 because I want to get through this stuff quickly. Um, okay, so this will take in images. Um, this version takes in images, so we need to figure out how to actually do that or the way to approach this process. Um, the other model, which is mplug owl, will take in video. So we'll look at that after this one. Uh, let's go ahead and connect to our drive account. adding in our headline for this just so we know that is video captioning but it's technically frame captioning let's go ahead and install the libraries we need PyTorch video and transformers and again this is where you would create a folder of frames um, again I think FPS of six is probably too high I would probably do like two or three um, or maybe even one depending on how fast you want to do this now the difference with this tool versus the other tools where we've been working on frames is that in this one uh, there's really no way to average our uh, labels. There's no labels to this. We're generating captions. Um, and there's probably a way using large language models to take a bunch of different sentences and like average them into one. Uh, it's probably a little bit outside the, the course material here. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we are going to take a random frame from our video and actually just use that for captioning. So this really just captions one frame. And we're gonna hope that it's like, you know, our clips are set up that they're not that drastically different, that we don't get like completely off the wall captions. But the thing to know about this one is you might get some captions that don't really describe the entire video because they're only describing one frame from it. So just be aware of that. But I will say I like the captions this produces. They're, they're easy to read and they're generally truthful, which is nice. Um, so let's go ahead and skip the generate folder of frames. If you wanna do that uh, for one of your pieces, you can. I would always recommend turning off your GPU using a CPU when you do this because it's uh, this doesn't even use the GPU and you don't want to waste credits. Uh, let's go ahead and load our model. So we're going to run this cell to load in our model. And it looks like this version, unlike other versions of our notebooks, this one has to use a GPU. So I'm actually going to make a note up here at the top of our notebook. You must use a GPU with this. this let's call it this model okay uh, so this is loading in how big is this model this model is quite large you will see that we are downloading multiple pieces of this and each piece is 10 gigabytes uh, this is happening quite quickly uh, with this model which is great um, but it is still quite large so this will take a moment for us to load um, so let's figure out what we're do here while we wait so we're gonna load up uh, in the background we'll load up this function which just uh, simplifies getting back our text model descriptions. And then we'll go ahead and, what is going to do? Oh, this is going to give us a single frame and give us a caption back. So let's just uh, make a note here. So this is testing on a single image. Okay. Let's go to drive, my drive, algo film, and let's go to our frames. And I only have two films that have frames right now, so I'm just going to go and grab... Yeah, let's keep doing Milo Notus, why not? Let's go in here and let's grab a random frame. And we'll paste this into our path. Hi, bug. Mm-hmm. that we've got it as a nice variable if you want to use it that way. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this now. Actually, we're still waiting on this stuff to load. There are some very, very large files here, so we'll wait on that to load. Um, while that loads, let's talk a little bit about how this is actually going to grab a random frame. So as we talked a little bit in the lecture, 
grabbing a random frame is a little tricky. I mean, it's not always accurate. Um, the other thing that we tend to do with this particular model is we're going to skip the first frame. Uh, the reason we do that is, as you've seen, Pi Scene Detect is a little glitchy. So I always want to skip the first frame just to be safe. Um, now, if there's only one frame, if whatever reason there is only one frame generated, I'll just grab that frame and just hope that it's good. Uh, but in general, skipping the first frame is probably a safer bet, just to make sure you don't get that first frame of glitch from, from Pi Scene Detect. Um, so we're just going to go in and grab it and pick out a random frame from a folder and then operate on that. And that's what these two uh, cells will do. Actually, this cell will do that, and this cell, getting a little sloppy with my notebooks here, we'll, uh, this is going to save the JSON. Okay. See how we're doing with loading here. It looks like our model has been loaded. And let's go ahead now and test this on my single image. So again, remember, I just grabbed a random frame myself, and I'm going to run this cell, testing on a single image, to check out and see what Blip describes this as. <laughs> I love this caption. So obviously this is a cat trying to swat at a bird with a beak, and instead, my cat wants to talk about what is in this image. Um, instead, what the caption is, a cat with a orange cat with a red beak sitting on a branch next to a bird with a red beak sitting on a branch next to a tree. Uh, so not terrible. I mean, it tells us a couple things about what's in the scene, right? So there's an orange cat, there is a bird with a red beak, and there is a branch next to a tree. We could work with this. Um, now, again, let's say this uh, particular image or this particular clip pans away into the forest. If we were to grab the, the frame of the forest, it's going to tell us, say, image of a forest. Um, so this is kind of the uh, hit or miss of a model like this. But a model like this is going to be much faster and much more computationally efficient than the next model, which looks at, which operates on video. And honestly, it doesn't provide as good of captions. So for now, we're going to work with this, and I think it'll be fine. So let's go ahead and grab this folder, and let's put the folder into this path. So again, now it's just going to grab a random frame and describe that uh, particular space or that particular frame. So here we go. It is definitely a different clip. An orange tabby cat is standing on top of a nest with a black bird sitting on top of it, on top of its head. Okay, well, that's clearly wrong. Again, these models uh, don't necessarily have good conceptual ideas of like how something sits. Uh, you know, it's sitting on top of what its head? On top of the bird, on top of the nest, I don't know. So anyway, what we can actually gather from this is there's an orange tabby cat standing on top of a nest and there's a blackbird sitting on top of something. Um, this is basically the best you're gonna get that I've seen today um, doing captioning. Captioning is like honestly a really hard topic um, there's lots of ways you could approach it, but this is a generally a pretty good result. Um, I mean, I might write something slightly more coherent, but I don't want to do that for every single video clip, right? So now we can go ahead and process this on all of our clips. Mm -hmm. So let's go down here, and same as we've been doing pretty much every notebook this week, um, we are going to just grab our JSON path, put our JSON path in there. And then what we want to do is we want to grab our frames folder, and remember, we want the top level folder, so let's grab this one. And then we want to filter by the same thing. Um, I always recommend doing filtering. One, because you don't know how long this is going to take if you have a feature length film. Um, it might take, I don't know, an hour and a half. So we don't really want to waste a, that much computation time in that case. So let's go ahead and just make sure that we're filtering by this. Um, to use this notebook or this cell without filtering is wouldn't actually work. Uh, it's kind of, I wrote this a little sloppily. Maybe someday in the future I'll fix this. But for now, just always know you want to grab one folder, uh, like one clips folder, and and then filter by that same thing. And remember that this filter name has to be uh, case sensitive and match uh, whatever is this folder title. So not this one, but this one. I'm a little sloppy when it comes to naming conventions, as you probably have noticed, and it might drive you crazy. Sorry about that. But just make sure that your some word in this filter phrase matches what's here. 
Oh yeah, let's go ahead and run this and see what we get as results. Cool, so it tells you what frame we're using and then it spits out a uh, random output as well. A black background with an airplane flying in the air above the dark surface of the water and the moon and the sky above the black surface. Okay, this is the other challenge that happens quite often with these models is it just starts to spit out random gobbledygook by the end. I'm actually going to stop this. Let me show you how to fix this. Because I think I've started to see this more and more with these models. So I'm actually just going to stop this and we'll edit something here. So up here in our function where it where basically generates the description for us, there is a min length and a max length. Uh, and the max length is 72, which I believe is either tokens or words, one of those two. Um, let's just set this to be shorter. I think, honestly, shorter captions tend to make more sense. The longer you make them, like the more you see that repetition happen or the longer you just see like kind of gobbledygook. The other thing that might change this is if I set my beam amount a little bit lower. Um, beams are like the probability of the next word being something and I think you kind of set it low to make sure it always gets you new results. But let's just run this and see if we get different results. So we'll run this and resave out our notebook. Again, for you, this will probably be already what you see here when you come here, because I'm going to save this notebook out with these results. But I just want to run this to see if I get better captions. It's an airplane flying in the dark with a black sky in front of the plane and the moon in the sky behind the plane. OK, so definitely better. Uh, we're getting one where it says the logo for Columbia Pictures with a statue in front of a blue sky and stars in the background with the words Columbia Pictures. So it can even read words. Like that's how cool these models are. Um, music composed and adapted by Michael Budlecker for the film The Man in the High Castle by James Clavell. Uh, that sounds like a lie to me because this is definitely not this film. Uh, and I don't know. Again, the models for these things get kind of crazy sometimes. Like they definitely make shit up. Um, and that's kind of one of the downsides of these tools. But um, we can maybe assume that like we're getting close here. Um, a group of cats lying in a pile of hay. That's very likely. That's I've seen this film. That is something that would happen here. So we're getting lots of interesting results. Um, what we're going to do with in the future, this is kind of all I have for this notebook, because uh, there's no real way to just say, like, hey, grab a bunch of these and combine them. Um, in the future, we're going to build a little GUI for ourselves. We'll actually say, like, hey, let me actually build up, uh, almost write a script using like these 20 different phrases. Uh, and then we can actually sequence them. So maybe we'll look at using something like, I don't know, ChatGPT or something to make that happen. Um, but regardless, there's lots of cool stuff we can do with this. And just having a description of these tools uh, gives us a lot of power going forward. So this is Blip2. Remember, this works on a random frame from your video. So depending on how much action and motion is happening in your, in your video, might not be that accurate, but it's at least going to tell you what that what's happening in that one frame. The next video we're going to look at, which I don't love as much as this one, but it does work on video, is called Mplug Owl. We'll look at that next. Um, one word to note there is it requires an A100, so it's going to be really intense, which I kind of almost don't recommend people use this unless they really like the results and they want to play with it, but I'll show you how to do it, uh, and hopefully in the near future they figure out how to, way to make the computation a little less heavy. Um, so that's it for this notebook. So again, I'll just run this. Um, my results will be saved to my JSON file. Um, and then we'll play with them probably in a couple weeks. Next week, we're going to look at uh, motion capture using OpenPose. So we won't really cover descriptions yet. But I promise we'll come back to this stuff and start to build cool tools to leverage this kind of data. Because this is really, really important data for us. Because it really gets to the point of like what's in the scene um, in a very descriptive way, which is really, really going to be helpful in the future. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, off to the um, M-Plug Owl notebook.